Today's movie is The Snorkel, the 1958 crime thriller directed by Guy Green from a script by Jimmy Sangster and Peter Myers. The film stars Peter Van Eyck, Better St. John and Mandy Miller. In their villa on the Italian coast, Paul Decker contrives a brilliant plan to murder his wife and make it look like suicide by gas with the help of a snorkel device that lets him breathe clean air while his wife asphyxiates to death. But when his teenage stepdaughter returns to Italy from her boarding school abroad, she immediately suspects Paul of foul play, but no one will believe her. Young Candy is determined to prove Paul's guilt, but with those around her suspecting her sanity and Paul plotting to kill her, can she succeed and can she survive? The Snorkel is an offbeat and interesting thriller. It's perhaps a little slow to get started after the shock of the initial murder scene, but it is distinguished by a really clever, in fact ingenious, murder plot. Peter Van Eyck brings an imposing and dynamic physicality to the role of Paul, a man with no morals and the rat cunning to do anything he thinks he needs to to get away with his plan. If there was one thing missing from this character, it's perhaps a sense of what his backstory is, what made him this psychopath, but in the scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. As a callous psychopath, Peter Van Eyck plays Paul very effectively. He's very cold, but also can turn on the charm when he wants to. I thought Mandy Miller was very impressive as Candy. She's traumatized by loss after loss, but she's just unshakable in her drive to see justice done. Candy is as small and scrawny as Paul is tall and muscular, and I felt that this adds uh, a real vulnerability to her character and a very interesting dynamic um, as the film puts her in the role of detective in the movie. So we have Candy as this frail-looking child trying to solve the murder when the police just won't. Better St. John, I thought, was okay in the role of um, Mandy's chaperone, Jean, but she just doesn't make any particular impression. I'm not sure if that's the writing or her performance. At times she seems very suspicious of Paul, yet at other times she seems like she's uh, succumbing to his phony charms, all this just days after the death of Paul's wife. The character just does seem a bit underdeveloped, I thought. While not the greatest movie ever made, the Snorkel is an interesting example of the kind of solid, workmanlike, entertaining movies that Hammer were putting out before they consolidated their output, output more into the horror genre. It does offer a lot of nice location filming in the Italian Riviera, some fantastic 1950s cars and fashion if you enjoy those like I do, and a genuinely clever murder plot with a really satisfying finale. I thought it would have been much more interesting and a lot more edgy if they had not included that final beat of the story that takes place in the police station. I can't really say more without giving a spoiler, but it would have given a really interesting moral complication to the story and a much darker edge to Candy's character. Perhaps they were limited by the uh, moral codes of movie production at that time, I'm not sure. Overall, I would describe the snorkel as a solid B picture if you're in the mood for a thriller with a great gimmick that is not too heavy or too violent. It does get more involving as it goes along, and it does have a really unique and very well thought out locked room murder scenario. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.